What's up guys? So today we've got another mail day video. This is a series where I go through some of the new tools I'm getting in. I unbox them on camera with you guys and see how I like them. But without further ado, let's jump into it. So I'm gonna open this one first. You'll see why <laughs> I think I know what this is. And this is exactly why I'm opening this first. So for a long time now, I've been looking for like nice small X-Acto knives. And I'm really happy with how small these are. So these are going to be for scraping glue off of phone and tablet frames and things like that. And you can see just how small these are. You can even get smaller ones than this. I wanted sort of a medium sized one like this. You can see it's double sided here and it's nice and sharp. It came with quite a few of them. And I like the little, little case they come in. I'm probably going to be using these with this tool right here, which is a double sided little VGA tool. Or more likely, I'll probably end up grabbing more of these. I really like how heavy these are. This is the Qianli Eye Hilt. And I really like it for the solder paste spreader tool that I've been using, but I want to keep this thing on here. So I'll probably grab another one of these for different shapes of X-Acto knives. But just to be sure, let's make sure this fits in here well. Yeah, that fits in there great, very sturdy. And I'll show you under the microscope how this looks. So you can see a bit better the shape that I grabbed. And this is just going to be to like scrape up adhesives and things like that. See, it's already digging into my mat, so it's pretty sharp. But yeah, I'm really happy with with these and i'm definitely going to grab more shapes so i'm not sure what the other ones are let me try to see it feels like they might be in this one so let's get this thing open can you guess which shape of knife i got <laughs> this thing is becoming completely useless all right here we go i think it's this one and yes here we go so we've got the big ones that i can finally use to replace this and then we've got the same shape but just a bit smaller so let's take a look at the normal ones first we've got a bit of foam in here i think just to prevent the tips from from doling out, but well, let me grab one of these. We can finally have a sharp X-Acto again. Let's compare these two under the microscope because they look quite a bit different actually. Here's the old dull one, and then here is the new one. And already the new one looks quite a bit pointier than the old one. I don't know if that's just because the old one is dull. So there we go, I can stop opening these packages in such a cringy way. And here's the last shape I got, which are these little tiny versions of the same shape. As you can see, they're just a bit smaller. And I've been keeping my eye out for like smaller exacto shapes like this. It's kind of hard to find these like even on Amazon or in the store. You're always going to get these same shapes and none of them are very precise. They're obviously like pointy at the tips, but I really wanted some smaller tips like this for precision work on motherboards. I've only ever been able to find these like giant versions, but AliExpress has a ton of these nice little shapes. I'll put a link in the description for where you can find like a bunch of different shapes like this that are actually precise. And here we can also compare this to the other ones I got here. Obviously the different shapes are gonna be nice for different things. So I'll put a link for where I got these in the description. Enough talking about X-Acto knives and we can move on to some other packages. All right, what else do we have here? Oh my gosh, that's so much better. <laughs> I should have changed that so long ago. I'm really excited about these. So when I'm doing BGA trace repair or just trace repair in general, I'm often using these little replacement pads like this and they're really, really tiny and difficult to work with. I think you guys have probably seen when I'm using these in my videos, they're like flying all over the place and they're very difficult to control because of how tiny they are. The whole point is for them to be tiny because they need to be tiny to do the kind of trace repair that I wanna do with these. But this tool really caught my eye because I think it comes with some different shapes that I don't already have. But more importantly, they come with these nice little like precision probes that you can use to place the traces where you want them to go. And the reason I want these probes is because when I'm placing these traces, I'm always using my titanium tweezers with just one side. You always see me doing this kind of thing. And this side is just kind of getting in the way when I'm going to place the traces with one side of the tweezers. So I was really excited to come across this because this is just exactly what I'm looking for. It's just like one side of the tweezers basically designed to help us place these replacement pads. But yeah, you can see we've got different shapes here than we have with the other ones. I'll show you these in comparison to the other ones I have. All right, so here are the ones I just got. And some of the ones I'm excited about here are these ones that don't have a tail on them, these square ones that don't have a tail on them. And then we also have these square ones that are a little bit bigger than the other ones I often use, which are these at the bottom here. And don't get me wrong, I'm really happy with the ones I already use, especially these circular ones with the tails on either side. Those are extremely nice when you're repairing BGA pads, but I'm really happy about these square ones without the tail because I'm oftentimes using these ones at the bottom and then just breaking the tail off. But it can be really annoying to do that without losing the piece that I actually want to use from these. And these larger rectangular ones with the tail are going to be much better suited for HDMI port repair. I've been using these smaller ones here, which work, but they just don't cover the entire pad. So if you guys are commonly doing trace repair, I definitely recommend grabbing both of these because having a variety of shapes and sizes and things like that are going to really, really help you out when you go to do trace repair. You're gonna always have lots of options for what you can use. 
So I'll definitely put a link in the description for both of these types of replacement traces. But actually the reason I got these was not because of the different shapes, even though I'm realizing now that that's gonna be really nice. The reason I got these was because again, these little probe things here, these are perfect. Yes, I'm really happy with these. These are exactly what I was looking for. So let me just show you what these look like. Wow, these are perfect. These are like needles, but with handles on them. We've got a bent one and a straight one, and I'm really, really happy with how sharp these are. I was really worried that they were gonna be like dull and potentially not as useful as the tweezers that I use, but check this out. So these are the tweezers I use when I go to like push things around, and you can see they're just as sharp, if not a little bit sharper than the tweezers. And here are the straight ones I'm using, and again, just a bit sharper than the tweezers themselves actually. So as silly as it might look, I'm super stoked about these because they have a nice handle on them and I can be super precise with these on the board while moving the traces around and I won't have to deal with the other side of the tweezers getting in the way of the angle I want to use and stuff like that. Especially with these bent ones, sometimes I want to like change the angle and then I have to switch sides entirely and it feels awkward. But now, especially with this nice little knurled grip, I can rotate this thing while I'm using it. These things are definitely going to be a game changer for me when it comes to trace repair. One of the other things I actually want to see with these other replacement pads as well is if they're easy to get off of the pad here. Because one of my qualms with these that I already have is you can see when I go to try to pull these off of this little sticker on the back here, they really are difficult to pull off and they just like stick really hard to the actual backing. That was actually one of the easier times I've had getting these off. A lot of times I end up just like bending or breaking the tail off when I'm not trying to. And it can be really frustrating to get these things off. So I'm really hoping these things come up a little bit easier than the other ones. So let me try to grab like this here, for example. And I can already tell they are not going to come up. Damn, yeah, that was just as hard as the other ones. They're honestly pretty similarly difficult to, to pull off. Uh, the nice thing is they're not going to go anywhere. So I guess the adhesive has to be somewhat strong. So I kind of understand. But you can see every time I pull one of these off, it kind of like bends it up a little bit and then I have to go to unbend it when I put it on the board. So that can be a little frustrating. We can try one of these square ones, see if this is a little easier to get off. Here we go. It's it's not too bad, but I mean, I can't say it's like easier than the other ones I have. Anyways, I'm super thrilled about these green tools here. I'm gonna be using these all the time. Oh, and it comes with like a little piece of sandpaper. I wonder if that's just to try to keep these sharp or something. But yeah, super thrilled with these. I've been really impressed with all of the best tools so far. They actually make these precision tweezers that are my favorite titanium tweezers that I've been talking about in the past few videos. So yeah, I think I'm gonna check out more of their tools because really, really happy with, with these. I'm excited to, to use them for trace repair jobs. Speaking of micro soldering and trace repair and board repair, I got a lot of questions in the comments about what kinds of resources I recommend for learning how to do this kind of thing. And to be honest, the best way to learn this kind of stuff is to just do it. I'm always saying that to just like get started, dive in, start doing repairs. It's the only way to learn this stuff. You can't just watch YouTube for hundreds of hours and expect to be a professional board repair technician. And there's a really cool opportunity coming up in a few weeks from iFixit. They're running this board repair course and they're teaming up with Alex from the Repair Academy and Justin from the Art of Repair in order to teach you in person at the iFixit HQ in Chattanooga, Tennessee. This in-person course starts in about three weeks on July 7th and you don't have to bring any tools. They're gonna to provide all the tools during the course. So if that's at all interesting for you guys, but you're not sure if it's gonna be right for you and you still have questions, I'll have a link in the description where you can quickly book a call with Justin from the Art of Repair, who's gonna be one of the instructors during the course. Justin's extremely nice and a really great person to get connected with. I met with him to go over some of the course material a few weeks ago, and it's just absolutely phenomenal material. If you sign up for the course and you use the code NANOFIX, you'll get $100 off the sign up fee. Full disclosure, I'll get a little bit of a kickback for anyone who signs up using the code. But yeah, without further ado, let's jump into the next package. All right, man, these exacto knives were uh, life changing. Okay, so thus begins the flux battles. So I made a community post recently asking what kind of flux you guys are enjoying. Flux is definitely my weak spot when it comes to tools. And I really haven't tried that many fluxes. For about like eight years, I used like fake Chinese Amtech. And I've never really branched out and tried other fluxes uh, outside of this like nano flux paste that you guys probably have seen me using. So that's why I wanted to get some flux recommendations from you guys so I could buy a bunch of different kinds and try them out. So this was one that a user recommended on my community post. It's MG Chemicals 8341. We aren't gonna try this out today or any of the other fluxes I'm gonna open today. We're going to be making a separate video on these. Uh, I would take way too long in this video to, to go through all of these uh, and test them in the way that I wanna test them. So here is another one. 
This one is another Mechanic Flux. This Nano Flux paste is from Mechanic, but I've heard really good things about one or two of their fluxes. So this is their UV223 flux. It does look like this one came with the little top on here off, but whatever. All right, we've got this, which I'm also pretty excited about and interested how well this is gonna work. So this is a little rubber thing. Oh, and it comes with more of the little Ameo spreaders that I really like. So that's pretty nice. That's like the non-magnetic spreaders that I've been using on this little eye hilt that I talked about earlier. So it's nice that it comes with those. But the main reason I got this was because of this little silicon pad. So you might be wondering what the hell this is for. And if you remember, I got this thing previously, which is a magnetic base for stencils. And Omeo makes these chip specific templates as well as the stencil. So the chip fits perfectly in this little recessed area and then it lines up perfectly with the stencil right away. And then you sort of slide it onto this magnet and the stencil gets pulled down by the strong magnet onto the chip. And then you can use these nice non-magnetic spreaders to spread solder paste over the chip for reballing. However, I've been wanting to use this magnetic base along with other chips. And there's a lot of cases where I have a specific stencil I wanna use with a chip, but I don't have the actual template for it or Omeo doesn't even make one for it, but I still wanna use the magnetic base. The problem is if I put the chip on and then I put the stencil over it, I'm gonna be applying hot air pretty close to the magnet itself. And magnets, when exposed to high heat, will actually lose their magnetism. And plus, since we wouldn't have the template for the specific chip, the chip is prone to moving around on the magnet because the magnet is kind of a smooth surface. So that's why Ameo makes this thing here. It's because it allows us to use this with any chips we want. And this sort of serves two purposes, one being that it doesn't allow the chip to move around as much as it would if it was on the magnet. And it also sort of shields the magnet underneath from the heat that we're gonna apply directly to the stencil and the chip. I know this is not the right stencil, obviously, but you get the idea. It's also important to note that not all stencils are magnetic. So some of the direct heated stencils are made out of a material that's not quite as magnetic. It still is magnetic. It's just not as magnetic as some of these other direct heated stencils. You can see I could pick this whole thing up with the stencil. So this is obviously not gonna work for all stencils, but it's gonna be really nice when you have a stencil like this that is magnetic for especially those tinier chips that like to move around a lot. And I just realized that the magnet is actually strong enough to hold the template and stencil on top of the silicon pad. And it's still really, really strong. So I might even use this every time I use this thing to extend the lifespan of the, of the magnet. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with this little pad. It should make this already extremely useful tool even more useful. And it's a plus that it comes with these two little spreaders. These are my favorite spreaders, by the way, for solder paste. I can't say enough good things about these. All right, we've got this package here. Looks like they put the adhesive strip for the bag in the bag. <laughs> All right, to continue the flux trend, we've got some Sturry V3. It looks like it comes with three different tips here, maybe different thicknesses, it looks like. So that's cool, I'll put this aside. And we've got one more. Whoa, that is a lot more than I thought I was ordering. <laughs> but we've got a huge tube of Chip Quick Flux as well. That is an absolutely giant tube of flux. I've got some different kinds of flux on the way still that haven't arrived yet. But yeah, that's gonna be for a separate video where we test different fluxes. Again, I'm super hyped about these green little probes for probably not just trace repair work. A lot of micro soldering work in general, I find myself using one side of the tweezers like applying tiny amounts of flux. So I'll probably be using these things quite often for that. Again, I'm pretty happy with this little silicon mat thing for the magnetic base. And we also grabbed three different shapes of the little precision X-Acto knives and they are nice and sharp <laughs> like I experienced today with, with my little package knife here. So pretty happy about that. So yeah, excited to use some of these tools in some future videos. I appreciate you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.